Hey everyone, it's Seth, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use improvised movement to learn something about your movement patterns, your movement habits, and begin to develop new habits and further the learning and the development of your movement practice. Okay, so I'm about to show you a brief clip of myself improvising with movement, in a sense just messing around, but what I'm doing is not random. The very first thing you see me do, I was just doing this and having fun and then I thought, okay, I'll turn on the camera and make a video, but then from there I'm just improvising. But again, what I'm doing is, as I improvise, I observe myself in action and I notice what are the patterns, where am, you know, which direction do I tend to go more, what am I doing with my head, um, all kinds of little things that I notice and then I deliberately uh, inject new ideas based on what I'm doing and other things that I realize, oh, I, I'm not doing that, but I could. I'll talk you through the video, um, but I just wanted to kind of give you a sense of what's coming because I think you can use this same kind of process in your own movement practice. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so I'm going to be playing here up against the wall. It's something I've been doing quite a bit recently, and I like it because I'm upright and yet I have this support so I can try things that maybe I couldn't do away from the wall. And um, just one idea here to think about as you watch is like, imagine a really skilled contemporary dancer might do basically the same maneuvers but in the middle of the room. But of course, if they did that, their head would have to be more over their base than in my case. When I work against the wall, it's also important to me, even though I'm using the wall for support, to not fall into the wall. That's part of what this turning around myself um, maneuver came out of, is just seeing, can I get all the way around without kind of getting stuck by falling into the wall? And you'll see there's moments that I kind of do fall into the wall. And um, why did I cross my arms? Well, I crossed my arms so that the arms would essentially be canceled out and I would have to find more movement in the spine and the ribs. Now here I noticed I was already side bending, so I decided to grab a hold of the top of my head and just deliberately increase the side bending to one side or the other. Uh, that led me to, to, to discover a particular position that I know um, from awareness through movement lessons by Moshe Feldenkrais where you can reach your elbow behind your head, you can grab a hold of your chin. I do this fairly easily for <laughs> some people. This is not going to be something you're going to want to just do that quickly. Um, but again, it, it just fixes that one side of my torso is much longer than the other. Can I still do this rotation maneuver and everything I'm, you see I'm doing with the legs? And then I switch so that the other side of my torso will be long and I keep going. So. This was pretty improvised, but um, just thought I would talk you through so you can see what are some of the ideas that I'm improvising with. And um, this is the kind of thing that I teach. <laughs> 